focus to one nifty company lupin s ramesh the cfo of lupin joins in now to talk about some latest developments on the company hi mr ramesh thanks very much for joining in today first i'm going to start by asking you about uh, cipro generic the one a uh, drug that you've received approval for on friday itself it is expected to be a 180 day exclusivity drug if i'm not mistaken can you just take us through how much of an opportunity it is for you one and two um going forward what does the us pipeline look like yeah cipro os is one of those first two files that we had in our portfolio if you recall you always been saying that in fact our first two files is perhaps the uh, the highest in the industry we got about 30 first to files to launch um, and this is just one of those you know products that we are launching uh, but that said it's not a very big product uh, you know it would perhaps address a market space of close to about 8 million dollars uh, that said there's one of those niche products that we are talking about uh, but that said it's an important thing uh, but it's not going to may to garner much uh, revenues for us okay and what would your us pipeline look like with this generic launch and how much do you have in terms of a pipeline and market size in fy15 that we can expect for the us generics market at least the us generics we have close to about 200 filings of which about 72 73 products have been have actually been launched so you would expect about uh, 100 odd products to actually get launched over the next 2 to 3 years and this is straddle across in fact a host of in fact uh, uh, therapy uh, uh, areas We have, in fact, the um, entire OCS portfolio. Uh, we've got about uh, 14, 15 products launched there. We've got another 15 to go. Uh, we also have started launch, you know, uh, filing for, in fact, Oftel, uh, Oftel Mology, and you could expect a few more launches from that uh, th- niche therapy area. But uh, apart from that, we also have this host of, in fact, uh, niche. Uh, a lot of those uh, opportunistic interventions the market provides for us, and we have uh, actually filed for it over a period of time, and those would get launched. Uh, but more importantly, we're getting into more uh, speciality, which would include uh, the respiratory space, the dermatology space, and potentially into uh, uh, controlled substances or even uh, uh, complex injectable space, for which we have actually looked at. Uh, uh, you know, we bought over this company in uh, in Netherlands, which would be actually an R&D company for uh, complex injectables. So our pipeline going forward is going to be richer. Mr. So, Ramesh, hi. Good morning. Uh, what about uh, other geographies, uh, Japan and uh, Europe in particular? um as we said in our last uh, investor call in fact we have been building up the building blocks in fact for uh, getting to becoming bigger in europe so we recruited in fact a very senior hire uh, marie shanau from in fact uh, teva and he is in charge of in fact europe and and uh, you know the uh, and russia uh, we actually beefing up our uh, skill set for for actually growing bigger in fact in in the european market uh, japan of course remains the second most important market for us uh and we have to, got two companies going out there uh kiowa which is doing very well mm-hmm. and in fact the second uh, company that we bought some time ago uh more into the injectable space called iron which we are actually we face some teething problems but over a period of time we expect that to settle down japan per se is going about 12 to 13% and that's a fairly decent number given the fact that the market is going around 10% okay and what about uh, the the india business because that was a bit of a disappointment last quarter Yeah but that's uh, because the fourth quarter is generally a lackluster quarter for us we look at the whole of last year we had in fact lots of other problems first of course is the introduction of NLEM which actually brought in its wake a host of uh, complexities and a lot of uncertainties in the market itself the second quarter we saw issues leading to the trade margins um the third quarter in fact we saw some robust results growing at a, good, a fairly decent percentage um the overall results were a lackluster about 5.6% for the whole of last year but we do expect the growth rates to perk up in this quarter itself and i'm sure that this quarter this year you'd find the impact of the economy also bouncing back and in fact looking at the at irf we're fairly confident that will sustain a growth rate of about 15 16% for the full year and that uh, should be seen in line with uh, in fact our past track record of about 20% growth o- over the last 5 to 6 years okay so what sort of recovery can we expect in the domestic market what is the sustainable rate that it will come in at in terms of growth for this quarter as well as for fy15 As I said perhaps uh, last year was an aberration yeah. uh, more because of in fact the you know the ecosystem around us and of course the economic factors itself uh, but I think um, the long term secular growth rates for in fact uh, the pharmaceutical industry in India could be about uh, 15 to 20% um for us that is if you look at the, uh, the industry perhaps about 10 to 12% uh, 
And um, given that, we would expect, in fact, growth rates well over 15 percent this year. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, Mr. Ramesh, you know, I just wanted to come back to the U.S. markets because the sticky factor in the U.S. markets for last quarter, at least, was the branded business, which a lot of analysts were not too happy about in terms of its performance. Can you just take us through how your key drugs are doing within the branded space in the U.S. markets, such as, say, the aero chambers of the world as well as Antara? And what is your guidance in terms of the branded business in the U.S. for F515? You know, if you look at our historic past, um, the salience of, in fact, brands has close to about 25% of our total turnover in America. Uh, it's come down dramatically mm. since then, and it's uh, hovering around the 10% mark. Uh, that's possibly because of the fact that, in fact, a couple of the products have been phased out. Antara became generic, in fact, about a year and a half ago. Mm. And the second product, Aero Chambers, is also phased out. Um, Suprax continues to be the mainstay of our business, uh, our brand's business in America. Uh, but that apart, we also have introduced, in fact, um, uh, two other products. One is called, uh, in fact, um, uh, Locoid, which is a low corticosteroid for, in fact, dermatitis amongst, again, uh, children in America. And, uh, of course, Alenia, which is, again, for uh, uh, diarrhea, again, for children in America. But it's too early days, you know. Uh, it'll be some time before they actually start uh, plopping up uh, bigger revenues. Uh, they are marginal products today. Um, but that, get, that said, we are actually trying to uh, beef up our overall brand's portfolio in America with looking at uh, uh, acquisitions, in-licensing opportunities, and so on. Okay. The medium term, obviously, these would be uh, you know, in-licensed or looking at acquisitions. But the, in the long term, you would be potentially looking at um, you know, products from our own stable. And that dovetails very well with our own uh, uh, niche speciality um, you know, uh, therapy areas like uh, uh, looking at Oftal, looking at, in fact, uh, OCs and respiratory, where I think 505 uh, B2s or, in fact, branded products uh, would, be, would be possible from our own stable. Okay. And what are your acquisition strategies? Because you have reiterated that maybe you'd like to grow in the Latin American market more aggressively. So maybe something like a Brazil would be on the cards and something decisive that we could hear from the Lupin stable in F515 with regards to an acquisition? Right. We've always said that, have, you know, that our appetite for our acquisitions is, in fact, pretty large. Uh, we broke it into three buckets. One is, of course, the geographical spread of countries that we would like to be in. The second bucket, where you could look at technology platforms. And third, where we'd be looking at, in fact, various uh, brands in, in countries that we operate in, including Japan and America. Uh, insofar as the Latin American foray is concerned, we just entered Mexico, in fact, if you recall, last yeah. quarter. Uh, we'd like to grow in that. Brazil is certainly of interest, and if we do get a good value proposition, which is compelling, we would look at it pretty seriously. But for sure, given the fact that our debt equity ratio doesn't exist today because we are actually uh, um, you know, a net surplus company, um, there is a possibility of actually uh, looking at pretty large acquisitions. Perhaps, uh, you know, and that you would see this crystallizing in the next few quarters. And what would be the acquisition size? Um, you know, uh, you know, I think the size is not so material as, in fact, the value proposition itself. Uh, today we are, uh, you know, it's quite possible for us to raise more than a billion and a half, two billions. Um, but that does not mean that we'd be spending the entire amount in, uh, in, in one or two acquisitions. Uh, you'd be looking at acquisitions in various buckets spread over the next several okay. quarters. Okay. Okay. All right, Mr. Ramesh. Thanks a lot for your time today. That's uh, Lupin.